Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and delve into the challenges and impact of each technology in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd learning experience. The Nelcor pulse oximetry monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on the FDA cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers receive funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for this speaking engagement. For this introduction segment of the series, a discussion on the Nelcor technology. We will discuss pulse oximetry and the impact of skin pigmentation on the technology and its implications for clinical practice. To help provide insight into the topic is John Gallagher, professor of the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. Welcome to the segment on pulse oximetry and the impact of skin pigmentation. Pulse oximetry measures functional oxygen saturation, and it's the percentage of oxygen bound to hemoglobin. It's actually a balance between the amount of oxygenated hemoglobin as well as oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin. 99% of oxygen is bound to hemoglobin and measured as the oxygen saturation, SAO2, or in the case of pulse oximetry, SpO2, and only one to 2% is actually dissolved in the plasma. Pulse oximeters are a surrogate for measured oxygen saturation, and their accuracy is determined by comparing oxygen saturation measured by the pulse oximeter to arterial oxygen saturation measured directly by co-oximeter. The FDA has device accurate accuracy standards that compare the pulse oximeter to measured or reference oxygen saturation by co-oximeter and requires that they be measured and accurate between 70 and 100% oxygen and in specific ranges of 70 to 80, 80 to 90, and 90 to 100%. Further, each sensor type must show an accuracy and they are listed here depending on the type of sensor the transmittance style, which is either a wrap or clip style, most commonly used, as well as an ear clip or reflectance sensors that are often seen on the forehead. The guides for the FDA classifies prescription use pulse oximeters as compared to over-the-counter pulse oximeters as class two devices with moderate risk and therefore require specific testing for accuracy. This testing at minimum should include 10 or more healthy subjects varying in age and gender and generating a data set of 200 or more data points. The subjects that are used should be at least two darkly pigmented subjects or 15% of that total subject pool, whichever is larger. And the data set must show agreement between the methods of measurement, that being pulse oximetry versus measured oxygen saturation within the subjects and among all subjects measured. So why is it important to know what the impact of skin pigmentation is on pulse oximetry? We're gonna talk about that a little more detail here, but it's important because it can impact melanin, can impact the absorption of the light that pulse oximetry uses and can lead in certain circumstances to unrecognized hypoxemia in patients with darker skin. Melanin is absorbed by the LED lights that are used in pulse oximetry and can result in some inaccuracies of the SpO2 readings. This can also result in hypoxemia going undetected in patients who have darker skin. Several recent retrospective studies found that the presence of occult hypoxemia occurred in black patients compared to white patients, resulting in delay and even an omission of certain treatments. In the majority of these studies, this occult hypoxemia was defined as an arterial oxygen saturation less than 88% when the pulse oximeter read between 92 to 96%. Over 18,000 samples were collected from 88 healthy volunteers. 22% were considered dark olive or extremely dark skin. And for the saturations between 70 to 
The Nelker pulse oximeters had a root mean square deviation of less than two for both skin pigmentation groups. Overall, and by skin pigmentation group, the Nelcor pulse oximeters are accurate and perform within manufacturer specifications as well as FDA accuracy requirements. Pulse oximeter accuracy does vary between individuals with lighter and darker skin pigmentation. There is an increased error in individuals with the darkest skin pigmentation. However, the difference between those with the lightest and darkest skin was within 0.08%, and again, within FDA accuracy requirements. In this study by Falsey and colleagues out of John Hopkins, this is a multi-center retrospective cohort study that looked at over 1,200 subjects with COVID-19, uh, also identifying occult hypoxemia in patients of black or non-black Hispanic patients compared to white patients. And separately, they also looked at a subset of patients that they predicted hypoxemia. These are patients that had an SpO2 of less than 94% before the measured oxygen saturation of 94%. And they evaluated or predicted how many of these patients would have had delayed or unrecognized need for treatment. 23, almost 24% of patients, over half of who were black, were recognized, unrecognized as needing treatment. Whereas there was delayed recognition in patients who were identified as Asian, black or Hispanic compared to white patients. So the important thing to take away from this is that there are still issues among all identified race in the study of unrecognized cases, as well as those with delayed recognition. However, this was predominantly noted in those identified as black. When we look at our pediatric population, this study out of Mott Children's Hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan, looked at over 1,061 patients less than 17 years old, identified as either black or white, comparing pulse oximetry to measured ABG saturation within 10 minutes. And of this, 21% of black children experienced arterial hypoxemia despite having a normal SpO2 reading, occurring, noting that cold hypoxemia occurred more frequently in this population of black children than white. And among those where pairs were measured, the odds of an SpO2 reading failing to detect hypoxemia were more than twice as great if the pair had come from black children. More recently, a study out of the University of Pennsylvania Health System was a multi-center study that looked at 7,693 7, subjects with paired observations comparing, again, pulse oximetry to ABG by co-oximetry. And what they did is looked at the occult hypoxemia occurrence, that being a saturation less than 88% at different pulse oximetry ranges, 92 to 96%, 94 to 98%, and those patients with saturations of 95 to 100%. And what they found is that the difference between black and white patients was strikingly different at the lower saturations of 92 to 96%, 8 versus 3% in black versus white, and that those percentage differences were still present, however, decreased and the lowest at the higher oxygen saturations, where in black patients, 2.5% versus white patients of 1.4%. And the frequency of hyperoxemia that they defined by a PaO2 on the blood gas greater than 110, they looked at this across all of those ranges. And what they concluded is that there was measurement error in pulse oximetry common in all groups, but the occult hypoxemia occurred mainly in black patients. And it was also occurred more frequently at the lower measurements of SpO2 between 92 to 96%. So what they did is they recommended that a target pulse oximetry goal of 94 to 98% be used rather than a lower target of 92 to 96% in advance of any mitigation strategies that could be come up with by technology change. Now, it's important when we look at these studies to remember that these are retrospective studies, that they report differences in occult hypoxemia by race, which is self-reported, rather than the degree of skin pigmentation, which is probably the more important factor to consider when looking at the changes in pulse oximetry across race. That also the measurements of SpO2 and SaO2 were not obtained at the same time. Often they were accepted if they were within 10 minutes and there could be many changes within this time period between 
oxygen saturation. The pulse oximeters used in these studies were prescription grade, but there was variability in the technology among the different brands and different brands and different sensors were not controlled for across the different study sites. Further, the impact of hyperperfusion, sensor fit, tightness, form, and location of the sensor was not known. One of the major limitations of the pulse oximetry studies we've discussed is patient classification by self-reported race, for example, white or black, rather than measuring skin pigmentation itself. There are a number of subjective tools, the one displayed here, the Fitzpatrick scale, that classify patient by different type of skin color. In this scale, type one is light or pale white, where type six on the opposite end of the scale is very dark brown or black. While there's a number of subjective scales, there's also objective tools such as spectrophotometers, which can actually measure more accurately skin pigmentation. Moving forward, studies should utilize these scales to more accurately classify patients based on skin pigmentation rather than on race, which can have a wide range of skin pigmentation across a given race. Multiple studies report that pulse oximetry accuracy varies by race. However, race does not correlate with skin pigmentation. Pulse oximetry measures arterial hemoglobin oxygen saturation using infrared light transmission, which can be affected by a number of things in addition to melanin, such as hemoglobin concentration, nail polish color, as well as other physiologic factors, including motion and perfusion. In this retrospective analysis, we evaluated the performance of Nelcor pulse oximeters in individuals with various skin pigmentation, ranging from very light to extremely dark across various types of Nelcor sensors. This is a retrospective analysis shown here that actually looks at over 18,000 samples and looks across different skin colors going from very dark olive, uh, very light, uh, dark olive and extremely dark skin. And for the saturations between 70 to 100%, Nelcor pulse oximeters had an accuracy measurement of less than 2% for both skin pigmentation groups, very light or olive and dark olive or extremely dark. A factor that needs to be considered in addition to skin pigmentation and depth of hypoxemia contributing to error in pulse oximeter reading is perfusion index. Both Nelcor and Massimo pulse oximeters perform with inaccuracy specifications of the FDA. However, Nelcor pulse oximeters had significantly better accuracy during low perfusion and in darkly pigmented subgroups than Massimo. Missed hypoxemia events were more frequent with medium to dark skin and during lower perfusion states for both pulse oximeters. Massimo pulse oximeters missed more hypoxemia events when compared to Nelcor. And these findings indicate the importance of considering low perfusion as a key amplifier of error in real world studies of pulse oximetry. In November of 2022, the FDA held a panel of clinical experts as well as manufacturers and other interested parties. And at the end of this, this day of hearings, the panel made key recommendations related to how things should go moving forward with the changes in both research and technology development. They recommended that prospective studies to evaluate the performance of pulse oximeters in adults and children of various skin pigmentations and clinical conditions be conducted, and that there be adequate sample size to evaluate the full spectrum of skin pigmentation as we develop different technology. Further, that information regarding the accuracy of the devices across various levels of skin pigmentation be included, and that there be recommendations for over-the-counter devices that clearly indicate their packaging that they are not intended for medical use and that there be further education, not only for healthcare providers, but the general public regarding the appropriate use of non-medical devices for pulse oximetry and what their intended use should be. As we look forward as clinicians, it's important to remember that pulse oximetry is an adjunctive tool to support clinical decision-making, but it's not a substitute for good assessment and clinical judgment. When looking at the pulse oximetry reading, we also need to consider what we find in our assessment, the signs and symptoms that may indicate respiratory compromise or hypoxemia, such as mentation, respiratory rate, 
skin color, and patient reported dyspnea or chest pain. If these findings do not align with what we're seeing on the pulse oximeter, then we need to consider additional information, such as the use of NABG to give us confirmatory information of both oxygenation and ventilation, and that we use this information together. So what should we consider as we move forward and what are the clinical challenges? Should clinical targets for pulse oximetry be increased to counter potential occult hypoxemia? Well, this has been proposed by the Chelsea study that we saw earlier, but what would be the consequences, unnecessary use of oxygen, provider workload, oxygen toxicity, and should we do this as a stopgap for technology fix? Can we safely use over-the-counter pulse oximeters? They may be the only alternative in some settings. And during the COVID pandemic, they were used widely in the home, but we need that the consumer and clinicians understand the limitations and that product warnings be given related to these devices. While medical grade pulse oximeters are safe and effective when used properly, accuracy can be impacted by both technical and patient factors. We need to understand what these clinical conditions are whether they be situations where the, the sensor is used correctly or incorrectly, whether we have issues with hypoperfusion, motion, as well as skin pigmentation, and making sure that we utilize the correct sensor for the right patient, for the right location, and the right clinical condition. Opportunities will always exist to continually improve our monitoring technology and to improve the health equity of our patients. Please tune in next week for a new segment from this series wherever you find your podcasts. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. Thank you for listening.